and um, welcome everyone. And I want to, um, today I'm going to start a series of, and, and the series is kind of simple. It's, it's uh, not as much a teaching as it is an impartation. And I'll, I'll start today. We'll see how far we get today and then Sunday and then next week. Uh, so how's the, how's the audio? Everything good? I can hear you. All right. So what I want to share with you is just simply um, living as a son, which is my life. So in order to uh, verify what I'm sharing with you, um, as the Apostle Paul had to continue to do throughout his lifetime, uh, in remembering what he was given from the Lord to do, and um, because people don't believe it. Okay, so uh, let me let me just start with this. I think sometime in Sunday school, way back when I didn't didn't go to church a lot. My parents were military people, and um, but I, I believe that back then somewhere I. Uh, Somebody told me that this guy on the cross loved me and died for me. And I, I believe at that time I got born again. But as we know, when the flesh grows, and uh, even though we're little babies and uh, we're pure in heart, uh, when the flesh grows, the sin rises up within us and, and kills us. And that's why we have to be born again. Because in the death, we get separated from God. That's happened to all of us. Because the seed of the eternal word, the, the eternal seed of God was given to us before we ever came into this world. As the word says, it's written that though the children, that's us, were partakers of flesh and blood, that he also partook of flesh and blood, that he might redeem us out from under the law, the curse, darkness. So that's basically what's happened to us. All right, now with this, the first operation of that seed coming alive in us when we believe uh, was salvation. So what did Jesus say? He said, if you believe in me, I give you eternal life. Well, that eternal life came with a new birth. And it brought us into a relationship with the Father, which is eternal life. This is eternal life that you might know him, the living God. Well, it's not necessarily that we know him. It's that he knows us and he's known us for eternity. So from age 11 to age 25, um, this man was completely possessed by a demon spirit. Now, it's not the kind of demon spirit you see down on the streets uh, somewhere, uh, all grossed out and messed up, but the kind of a demon spirit that was grooming me and, and uh, setting me up to go into... Uh, area of politics and power in the world. So by the time I was 25, I was very successful in, in, in business, and yet I was completely corrupted. I had legitimate legal businesses and uh, also uh, illegal businesses, very profitable. And uh, I had no reality of um, love or, well, love. I had no idea what love was. And the love of money or the, the desire for money was the only thing that I could see was of value in this world. And that was the demon spirit within me. So I received a small track 
that uh, had a scripture on it. What do you gain if you gain the world and lose your soul? And I had no idea what a soul was. No idea whatsoever. I thought it was just something that gave people the ability to have rhythm and dance. <laughs> well, I thought about that scripture a little bit. And one morning, about three weeks later, <clears throat> as I was driving to an appointment, uh, this word exploded in me. And now when I say exploded in me, it's like my experience of it was simply my head totally opened up and I saw this spiritual creature being, being cast out of me. I actually saw it. Well, I pulled my car over to stop and I was just overwhelmed with what was going on. And in the moment, within 20 minutes time, I had received a couple of things that I became aware of. Now we can only become aware of something if, if God gives us that ability or he grants that awareness to us. But the first thing I was aware of was the power, the, the power of the word of God and that the word of God was absolutely alive. And the next was the power of the blood of Jesus. This revelation about the blood of Jesus and the connection between the blood of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. <coughs> and the third thing I got was <clears throat> kind of like a waking dream, not just a vision, but an experience, but uh, it was beyond my, my physical consciousness. And that was that I was uh, in the corner of a room, and I was bound up with a chain and uh, uh, had blood all over me. And, and that was what was left of my soul life. It was completely in bondage. Now, this demon spirit had taken over. And here this man was uh, getting ready to go into politics. And uh, he had a lot of friends that were all a bunch of demon possessed people too, probably. And um, the Lord looked down upon me. I saw it. He looked upon me. He says, come on, son, and follow me. Well, being stripped of all the identity that I had under that demon spirit, other than, you know, I had a body and uh, my name was Michael. Other than that, all the rest of my outer identity, my life, the way people knew me, the way my family knew me, all of that was just totally stripped off when that demon spirit was cast out. And so the identity that I had then coming out of this experience was that he called me a son. Uh, you know, what does that mean? Well, I didn't know. So <clears throat> my parents, uh, flew in because they they heard that i had quit my uh uh i was a young insurance executive and i quit the job i just walked away gave them the keys gave them all my files and said i'm through and uh other things in my life i just totally rejected just left it because it was all something that had been created by the devil and so we went to talk and then they suggested I go see a psychiatrist because of course I went nuts uh, in their eyes, <laughs> forsaken my whole life the way I did and following God, you know, crazy thing. Well, <clears throat> the uh, psychiatrist had me committed to a, a, a private psychiatric hospital for a month. Nice little place, had a little duck pond there and you can do some basket weaving and sit out and look at the ducks. And um, that's when I first started reading the Bible. And I just read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and saw what it was to follow Jesus. Now, I didn't know Jesus at the time. I really didn't know. All I knew was that I wanted to follow after whoever it was that delivered me from that demon. And I was willing to follow after them with everything I had. I mean, I, 
and I took my car to the bank. I parked it. I said, hey, dear, take this thing back. I just, I just let my entire life go. Took all of my suits, all my, all my um, fancy clothes, and took them down to the place in the hospital where they have a free, free store for people to get clothes. And I, I forsook everything. <clears throat> and after I came out of that, uh, that uh, private sanitarium, I just lived on the streets. I had something that I didn't know anybody else had. I had Jesus. Well, I went around to the, the big uh, pastors that were in the city, in the city of Denver, Colorado. And uh, I went to the, the biggest pastor in the town and he was on television and, and uh, got an appointment and went in and told him of my experience. and. Uh, seeking some kind of counsel, seeking something. And um, he just looked at me like, whoa, you know, you're, you're, you must be from Mars. That's, that's probably what he thought because there was no way he could even begin to identify with what had happened to me. All right, so I just continued living on the streets and traveling around and traveled around the U US. And during this time, the Lord gave me clear instruction. Now, I say the Lord, whether it was the Lord or the Holy Spirit or an angel, the, the angels that were ministering to me, that were talking to me and guiding me. And uh, th this actually happened. Uh, okay, I, he said, I want you to get a white sheet and cut a hole in the middle of it and go out and stand on the highway and uh, just stick out your hand and um, wherever the car that stops picks you up, you go with them until I tell you to get off. Well, I traveled thousands of miles like that. And um, people were astonished. And here's a guy out here in a white sheet standing in the road. And uh, when I would get in the car, I was given instruction not to tell anyone who I was not to give them any kind of idea of who I was, but as the Holy, as the Spirit would give me words, I would say these words to the people. I found out later that they were words of knowledge, words of wisdom about the people's lives, and they were just astonished. It was, it was quite a, a interesting time, and I, I, I realized at the time of what was going on was that the Lord was literally destroying all of my old identity to walk as a son and bringing me into such uh, a tight realm of obedience that uh, if I was going to eat, it was because he somehow was going to supply the food. I wasn't going to ask for it. I wasn't going to seek after anything, but simply obey what I received. And uh, this, was, this was quite intense, you can imagine. And during this time, um, my identity as a son was very, very, very shallow, small, no real concept of it. But as a disciple, I was a doer of the word of God. So laying hands on the sick, the, a lot of people that were sick on the streets and, and they got healed. Uh, raising the dead. And because I had a, a certain perception of demonic possessions that I had had in my own soul, uh, I was always seeking after demons to cast them out. And I was aware that uh, my presence, just me being there, uh, gave them a great deal of fear because it's like... Um, our presence as, as sons walking in, in faith with the living God burns them. They, they, they actually feel uh, a little bit of the sense of eternal damnation in the lake of fire when you're around them. <clears throat> so after about nine months of uh, this type of um, existence and um, everything I had used for Again, everything I had useful during the day and the night, 
was supplied to me. And I would find a place to sleep. I, food would be available somehow, some way. If I had any use for money in any way, it would, somebody would give it to me. But my whole focus was one thing, be a disciple. And that disciple was a doer of the word. And the doer of the word was to tell people about Jesus. I didn't know hardly anything. I didn't know any kind of religious understandings about anything, just that he was real and he was alive. And uh, so by the end of this nine month period, uh, after this time, I was led to go into a place out in Arizona and there was a big uh, camp meeting out there. And the people would drive in with their camper uh, vans and, and put up tents. And there were some cottages there and, and a couple of hundred people there. And uh, I'd never been in a big assembly like that at all. And uh, as I went in there, uh, I became aware of some things that were amazing. You know, the presence and the feeling of the Holy Spirit was, was so strong. Now, this is a funny story to me, but uh, the preacher would preach the word. I, man, I was totally believing it, getting it, I'd bearing witness with his uh, preaching about Jesus and Jesus the healer, Jesus the provider. And um, uh, of these people, there was quite a few that were not saved, maybe. And then when it came to the time of an offering, I, I saw the most amazing thing where the guy would, um, he would tell everybody that God told him to collect a, a certain amount of money, like a hundred thousand uh, dollars to use for the ministry this year, that if people would pledge, you know, he needed a hundred people to pledge a thousand dollars for a year. Well, understand this is way back when. So a thousand dollars, back then was probably $25,000 today. All right, so, uh, and, and he had a good little music team there with him as he was preaching and he would preach a little bit and he'd say, okay, now I know there's somebody else. Come on up here and stand up here in this line. And people would get up and they'd stand up in the line to commit themselves to $1,000 over the year. And he just kept going. Well, I tell you what, if I had had anything, anything, I didn't have anything, no possession whatsoever. And if I'd have had it, I would have given it in that offering. Uh, I mean, it's just like, just drawn it right out of me. And I, I kind of began to question it because two hours, two hours later, he's still doing the same thing, believing with all his heart that God, you know, told him that there was a hundred people give a thousand dollars. <laughs> and he wasn't, and they all stand, they're just standing there. These people are standing in line up by the, uh, the preacher stand there and just standing in line and uh, somebody else would give up and they would come up and make a commitment. Finally, after two hours, he got, he got all of the money that he was committed. Now, I believe that God's told him that. And this is what I said, Lord, Lord, explain to me about this, about money and ministry. Tell me about it. And he says, never judge. He's speaking to me. He says, never judge a minister on how they get their money. Never judge them. Okay, so, so that means, you know, right or wrong or they're evil because they're after money. And, and so it set me free from caring about how people get their money. And of course, there's a lot of, you know, corruption in it. There's been a lot of corruption throughout the world in every country, every country, um, where people just become uh, numbers on a, on a membership roll. And, uh, and some places they, uh, they make you commit yourself to, uh, to signing up on, on your tithes for the year. And they want your income so that they can make sure you're given your tithe. You know, all kinds of crazy stuff. And, and so because I was wrapped up in money, I, I didn't want to get around it. I didn't want to get, get into it like that. All right. So anyway, from that place where um, uh, 
I went and, uh, and, and talked to this guy later. And I, I, I asked him something. And before I had a chance to ask him, he had some kind of discernment on me. Now, I'm, I'm just dressed in a white shirt and khakis, you know, tan, tan pants. And I've got uh, sandals on. And uh, he says, oh, there's something about you. I don't know what it is. There's something about you. What do you want? Do you want something from me? I said, I need some... Uh, I need to have some gas money to give this guy some money to give me a ride. And uh, he just grabbed the money out of his pocket and shoved it at me. And that <laughs> was really interesting. All right, so from there I went and the Lord had me ride with these people back across from Arizona to California. And if you know the, the territory, there's a big desert. There's a big desert there. And the Lord had me get out of that car uh, with, a, with, a, with some water. And uh, those guys just left me in the middle of the desert. And I was happy because the Lord said, I want you to come out here and fast and pray. Well, I thought about fasting because I'd, I'd done a lot of fasting. But he says, no, you just haven't been eating. You haven't been fasting. I want you to fast and pray and speak it in tongues. And um, that was it. So I went out. It was on a Monday. So this is the desert. It's very hot. I'm very fair skinned. And I know I'm just going to burn like a, like, a, like a hot dog, you know, just going to cook. But it didn't make any difference. This is what he told me to do. So I went out and I walked out about a day into the desert away from the highway. Monday and then Tuesday. Wednesday, sometime in the afternoon on Wednesday. Uh, I was hiding from the sun. I was looking for, for shade anywhere I could find it. And finally, I just sat down and began to pray in tongues inwardly, not outside of, with my mouth because I really couldn't speak too well because I was, my lips were pretty burnt. And so inwardly, and I don't know how long it was, but uh, you know, you get to praying in tongues for a while and you just lose, you lose, you know, touch with the world, which is great. And so all of a sudden I felt pain. Totally everything in my body seemed to be on in pain. The next thing that happened to me, I was in heaven, in, in a place called paradise. And paradise is like a vast, 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 most, most incredibly beautiful place outside of the cities. There are cities in, in you know about heavenly Jerusalem, but you also uh, must realize that if you're a king and you're going to reign and rule with Christ, all of you aren't going to be sitting in Jerusalem to reign. <laughs> That's his city. Okay. It is a big place. And my first awareness of coming into what was, where I was, was that every single thing was alive. The atmosphere, you know, now I'm not in my physical body. So all I can say is that I'm, I'm in the spirit, I'm in the soul. But I'm, my body's dead. It's back on the earth, and it, it actually died. It, I separated. But I didn't go outwardly out through uh, this physical universe. Somehow I went inwardly. But that made sense to me at the time because he said the kingdom of God is within. So during this experience in heaven, uh, I got to experience a lot about... about um, um, paradise and, and the, the absolute beauty and wonders of it. You know, if you, could, if you could look at the most beautiful scenery you could ever imagine on the earth, it's just beautiful, beautiful, bright sunshine and beautiful flowers. and uh, All of that that we see on the earth would be, would be like a garbage dump compared to what I was seeing in heaven. Now, everything that I saw, everything that I heard, everything that I became aware of, I also knew that it was the spirit that was allowing me to experience. 
I wasn't experiencing anything that wasn't him doing it. So I say that because I wasn't seeking after anything of my own. I wasn't trying to figure out anything. I wasn't trying to, I had no questions. I had no um, uh, seeking anything. Like I want to go see that. or see, I just would was going along, being led by some angels, going along experiencing this 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 place of, of paradise and then it came to a place where we went up uh, up up away up a, a, a meadow to a the top of a hill giant hill okay and, and it was like where uh heavenly jerusalem was got to experience going into heavenly jerusalem and uh, had several instances in there that were just wonderful things but all of my perception, all of it, while I was in paradise, I met many spiritual creatures there and uh, talked with many angels. And they all looked at me and perceived me and received me as though I was Jesus. I was a son of God. When I went into the heavenly city, there were, were all kinds of... Um, creatures in there, uh, angels, and there were, uh, as, as the scripture says, there were souls of men that were perfected, and there, there were a few sons of God there. Difference. I don't understand it all. I'm just sharing with you. All right, so <clears throat> the experiences I had in this city also were wonderful, and um, with, with the mansions there, the houses that were in the city, the way the city operated, the, the fact of how, how big it was in comparison to <coughs> who we are and how little we really are compared to heaven. But uh, uh, the measurement that was given in the book of Revelation uh, where the angel measured the city, measured it according to the measure of a man. In, in meters, so that the city was, um, I don't know, well, in miles, 1,500 miles. The city was 1,500 miles cube, a cube, 1,500 miles. That is a giant mass of cube. And then there's a big wall around it. So you got 1,500 miles up and 1,500 miles all over. <laughs> big city because there's a lot of inhabitants in that city. Now, finally coming to the end of my time in, in heaven, the Lord appeared to me in, after a worship session that we had been in a giant arena. And um, in that worship session, uh, after that worship session, I was leaving the arena and uh, the Lord called my name and turned around and he's no, no more than uh, two meters away from me. And my first experience of him that I remember, and it was given to me, and I know that it was given to me to experience it this way. My first experience was that he was the greater part of me and that I was an intimate part of him. There was absolutely nothing about him that made me feel the least bit inferior. Complete acceptance and something else. And that's what I'm going to talk about right now. He began to talk to me. And how long this took, I, I don't know. But he began to talk to me that about things that I don't, I, I didn't even remember when I came back to the earth. I just remembered him talking and talking and talking and talking. And maybe I was talking back with him. But what happened was that during the time I was talking, three, three experiences, three instances, three things happened to me that came directly out of him. And the first thing that came out of him was like, like a rush of extreme life. And it came into my soul. 
And I can define it this way. It was him imparting into me his oneness with me and with all of his body. His oneness with his body. Next, after some time, again, this extreme life came to me. And with it came revelation of his oneness with me and imparting his oneness with this entire kingdom, all of paradise, all of the spiritual creation of, that has eternal life, his oneness with it. Talking some more. Finally, it came to where this, again, this extreme impartation of life came to me his oneness with me and his oneness with the father. Now, I didn't know the scriptures at that time. But as that finished, and he finished talking to me, he said, Michael, will you take what I've just given you back to the end time generation of my body on the earth and impart it there and so i i said sure yeah great i'll do <laughs> what are you going to say to god no <laughs> and so the next thing i remember i am looking out through my eyes i'm out in the desert and i seem to be propped up against a rock where I was sitting up and I noticed in the, in, as I looked across there, that there was a, 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 a truck going along and you know how all the dust flies up behind a truck as it's going across a dirt, dirt area. And I'm aware, I'm aware that uh, it is a, a man and a, with the gas company, the natural gas company, and he's out running the natural gas lines, but, the real thing that he was doing was to come to find me and pick me up. So he drives by and I seem to be right by this dirt road. And um, he looks, he stops, he gets out, he's talking to me. I am telling him, hey, Jesus is alive. Do you know Jesus? That's all I could say. He picked me up, put me in the back of the truck and put a tarp over me. And then um, was driving me somewhere but i heard him on the radio he, had, he didn't have cell phones back then they had car uh, tell uh, uh citizen band radios in their in their trucks and he has called to a hospital that he had found this guy out in the desert and he wasn't sure if the man was alive or dead now i'm speaking i was speaking through my through me i was seeing i was hearing through my body so he gets to the hospital and they put me on the on the hospital on the gurney and they take me into the emergency room. And while I'm there, I'm everybody I'm looking around and uh, uh, I think I'm looking around. But anyway, I see and uh, I'm saying, you know, hey, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming soon. You know Jesus. And nobody pays any attention to me. And so they're sticking me with needles and they're doing all kinds of things with me. And then about 45 minutes. And I know this because this man comes in. Now I know that he is, just by the spirit, I know that he is the resident doctor on duty at the time. So he comes in and says, what's going on? So we've had this man here for 45 minutes and we haven't been able to find a heartbeat on him. Now, you know, not a heartbeat after what, six minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes, you know, they, they declare you dead, but somehow they kept working on me. And soon as I heard that, that they didn't perceive the heartbeat, the Holy Spirit spoke to me 
let his heart begin. And then all of a sudden, ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. Now, here's my experience with this. I was not connected to my body. But I could see through my eyes. I could hear through my ears. I think I'm speaking, but I'm not connected. And those people had no connection to me. But when the heart started, then the blood began to flow through the body. And the soul was able to enter into the body. You know, if your heart stops, your soul separates. So that gave me a great deal of understanding of the reality of what death actually was. Spiritual, I mean, physical death. Just your soul be opposite. Your body will drop dead. You're not dead. You're, you're a soul. You will live for eternity. So after I was revived, they thought they had brought me back from the dead and they had a big party. And uh, I, uh, I was in there for about two days while they were replenishing my bodily fluids. <laughs> I was pretty dehydrated. And, uh, but the experience that I had once I came into my body lasted for about two weeks. When I would look at anything, now I could perceive this physical world in, in, a, in a normal way, but if I would look at it with any kind of intention to, what is that kind of an idea? I would see everything there was about it. If I would look at um, uh, the mirror on the wall in, 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 in the hospital room, I, I would see the beginning of that mirror and the end of that mirror. I would see its creation. I would see its deterioration. I would see its destruction. When I would see a person, I would see the beginning of their life and the end of their life. My perception through my mind was the mind of the spirit, the alpha and the omega. And from that time, I knew that, that when Jesus came forth out of the desert, after he had totally put his body under, it was a physical body. It was the body of, of the second Adam. After he totally put his body under, he would see, if he wanted to see, the alpha and the omega of everything that was around him. From eternal life, we can see temporary time. Now you and I, as sons, are learning to perceive this temporary time. When I was sent back to the earth, <clears throat> I came from a place of oneness into a place of all of the difference that there is here. All of us on the earth here are coming from a place of all the difference into oneness. I'm going to repeat that. You see one another as different than yourself. The day will come when you will come into a greater oneness where you will see the other person as literally a part of yourself you'll come more and more into the mind of Christ. This is how I came to the earth. This is how I began the ministry that he had given me to do. Now I'm fully aware from that time to this day that it's him that's alive. So that brings up our first scripture. Galatians 2.20. You were crucified with Christ. Yet you appear to be alive. Yet it's not you. It's Christ who is your life. And the life that we're living here in this flesh, we're living by his faith. His faith, not our faith 
towards him, his faith toward us. His faith toward what he's doing with us. His faith. As Jesus said, you must enter into his kingdom as a little child. In the Christian world, it took me years to comprehend the <clears throat> extreme diversity of confusion. I didn't understand it at first. I had to deal with my soul from the standpoint of anger and because they were so blind I had no no idea but then the Lord gave me a lot of mercy and helped me find compassion because they're coming from a totally different place or position that I was coming from when my soul left the earth and went into heaven after all those years belonging to the devil, it was absolutely destroyed, except for the very life itself. There was nothing, nothing of it, nothing of it of God, nothing of it of, of any good at all destroyed. It was just like that desert that I was in. There was nothing growing there that was worth redeeming and anything, but the life of it, the very existence of my soul. All right, now I'm saying these things to you because we are at an end. I wasn't sent back just to be another minister on the scene of religion. I was sent back, and my time here has been a time of intercession. A little bit of outward ministry, but intercession. What was that intercession? Giving. Knowing my oneness with you knowing my oneness with the body of Christ, giving, increase. Increase from the very beginning of a, of a little soul that, like I, I've met little Orthodox, little old ladies, little old men, old people that, that held on to Jesus through all kinds of stuff in communism and Nazism and fascism held on just to the belief that he died and that he loved them and, and that they have a future with him in heaven. I mean, just simple, simple, simple faith. Imparting into them because they're part of us. They're part of me. And the intercession is the ability, it's the power to release life. As it is written, the Lord Jesus himself, seated at the right hand of the Father, ever lives to make intercession. And I said, Lord, how do you make this intercession? By giving life. You notice that uh, if you've read in the word where you got all of these prayers of the people of the earth and they all kind of come up to a place called an altar and there they're, they're, they're mixed with uh, some things and, and offered up as an incense unto God. To give life the way you are giving life, sons, and you are giving it whether you're aware of it or not. It flows out of your words. It flows right, not religious words, just the word of hello, how are you today? Well, you look good today. Every kind word, every gentle word, every, every word of correction or instruction, every word that comes out of your mouth, you are imparting life to the one who has ears to hear. Remember Jesus many times, they that have ears to hear, let them hear. In the book of Revelation, also, Jesus speaking, let them hear. If, if you can understand my words, you know, I know you understand me. 
Because in the basis and your, your beginning in the revelation of who you are as a son, you know it. You know that you hear me. You know that you understand me. I'm nothing special. I'm just, just a part of you. Jesus is our head and we are his body. Galatians 2.20. We were crucified. Who? Our old man. The man of the flesh. The person that became separated from God. Back when we were little kids, somehow. Separated from God by the flesh rising up. And the law coming in the law of sin and death coming in and killed us. And so the Lord himself came in flesh and blood to redeem us completely out of that power. Now, in, I want to read this in um, 1 Peter, no, 2 Peter. I want to read this to you. One, three through 11. Now you notice today, I, I'm not speaking fast, just slow enough for everybody to take the words that I'm saying and let them have place. So your mind's not just jumping from one little sentence to the next. So here is the word of God. According to his divine power, He's given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, we are to give all diligence and add to this faith virtue. Now, in King James says virtue, the word virtue actually means add to this faith power and to power, knowledge. To knowledge, Self-control, self-control, patience, patience, God-likeness, God-likeness, then brotherly kindness. That brotherly kindness means treating one another as sons of God. And to that sonship, we are increased with love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. But he that lacks these things is blind, cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was already purged from his old sin. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. If you do these things, you will never fall. And in doing these, an entrance, a doorway, a gate, shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus. So I'm going to break this down a little bit. If you notice when you read scriptures that the apostles, all of them, will give you a big picture of the final acts, the final fruit, the oneness with God, the fullness of it all. And we lay hold of that when we first lay hold of our sonship. We get a, wow, I am a son of God seated at the right hand of God. Yes, we are. 
If you have any doubts about that, just hold your breath for about five minutes and you'll find out. You are. And anything of you, of you, is given instruction by the Spirit of God to be a doer of the word. So it says here that we're given everything that pertains to this life, eternal life, everything that pertains to life and godliness. Anytime you see godliness, don't, don't take it religiously. It means your sonship, God-likeness, God-likeness, godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. This is not the knowledge about him. This is the spirit of knowledge revealing the life of Jesus in you. See, you've been growing in knowledge of the Lord. As a son, you're growing in that oneness Revelation knowledge of his oneness with you, your oneness with him, not just about him, not just about him, that he's out there somewhere, or he's up there somewhere, or he's doing that over there, or uh, but the oneness of him, knowledge of that oneness, he placed that in you it's being imparted to you through that seed of sonship revelation knowledge of your oneness in him in heaven his oneness with you on the earth now this is important to get <laughs> because see it is he that is changing everything in you it is him becoming totally one in you not your oneness with him i'm one with god so i'm gonna do this and no 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 that's not it it's him that's alive he's the man he's the woman he's the mother he's the father he's the grandmother just like this this how simple it is suffer the little children to come unto me for of such is the kingdom of god before they got corrupted and had to spiritually die Of such is the kingdom of God. Not going to be, but is. I believe that this could be a, a true statement. That everything that we can possibly think about heaven here on the earth... Everything that is actually the reality in heaven would be different. So much so that the only way we can really get it here is in the experience of love, in the experience of life. I know that all of the teachings about all of the stuff that the religious people teach, uh, most all of it makes no difference. All of the history of the Jews doesn't make any difference to us. Jesus fulfilled all of the Old Testament prophecies about himself. All of the operation of the law, all of the operation of the Everything was fulfilled in him. 
So it's good to know the Bible stories. And if, if you, you, uh, you want to know about uh, uh, who's it, Jonah and the whale. Okay, well, if you ever get swallowed by the whale, then maybe, maybe some of Jonah's faith uh, would, you know, help you out a little bit. But it, it's really going to pass away. The history of this world is going to pass away. All of it. Now, when I say that, I'm speaking about something that hasn't appeared yet in temporary time. And that is a new heaven and a new earth. Where there is no longer any remembrance of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, of sin, of darkness, of no remembrance whatsoever. That's the way a little child comes into this world. See, their soul is totally wrapped up in heaven until their body begins to react and causes and takes control of their, of their soul. Then, of course, they come into temporary time. You can take any little kid anywhere in the world, any little kid... <laughs> Look into their eyes, deeply into their eyes, and, 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 and you can see something so pure that you can't recognize it. Well, that's our home. That's where we're going to. So wonderful, it's beyond expression. It's beyond imagination. So wonderful. Now, we have this knowledge of God. It's already in us personal intimate relationship the word knowledge in all of the new testament except in one place is personal intimate relationship the kind of word that knowledge where a man has intimate personal relationship with his wife he has he knows his wife personal intimate relationship that's the knowledge of god and we are growing in that as sons, as we learn, because he's teaching us to be sons. Look at this here. Now, we are given these exceeding great and precious promises. Here is the word that's a light to our path and a lamp to our feet. The promises. Well, we've already got some of the promises. How about salvation? Does anybody doubt that they're saved? If you do, well, kick the doubt out. Because you are saved if you believe. It's that simple. Believe that Jesus died on the cross for you. You come into salvation. Now, that means the blood of Jesus has come upon you to sanctify you. And to begin the work through the Holy Spirit of transforming you. So the Apostle Paul said it, you, this transformation begins with the renewing of our minds, changing in our minds. The change is our identity. Everything about you is your identity. Everything about you is your identity. Everything you do is based on identity. So we lay hold of this truth. Now I am the Son of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon me, he calls me Son. Then everything else, everything else in that seed of sonship, everything else is growing and increasing and changing us. Now when I say us, I'm talking about our soul here on the earth, not us spiritually. See, now I am one with you in your soul, but only to the extent of the life of Jesus that is in your soul. You're one with me, only to the extent of the life of Jesus that's in me. There are still things in me that's not the life of Jesus. If I sin, it's not I, 
but sin that dwells in my members. You know this word, okay? So we're not perfected in this flesh body, but we are being transformed. These precious promises, the things about the spirit, you've already got them. They're already given to you. In God's perceptive, everything is already given to us. We're already one with Jesus. We're seated with him. We're operating. In other words, eternal life is so different than temporary time. You know, we take a breath. We have to take another breath because the last one's gone. Now and it's gone. Now and it's gone. Now and it's gone. Temporary time. Okay. Unfortunately, our, our, our bodies are, uh, have the operation of death to where they, they grow up and they're so beautiful, and they're so flowery and they're so wonderful and then they go the other way. But that's not the way it is with our souls. Our souls are ever increasing in the life of God because of these promises. Promise for peace, promise for the mind of Christ, promise for the fruits of the spirit. Promise, promise, promise. We partake by laying hold of those promises, knowing what those promises are, and holding on to those promises until they are manifest. Manifest means they come alive. Come alive. So I found in all of the things that Jesus in me, his faith, he has faith for something primarily. The primary thing he has faith for in this soul is for the, in, for the increase of his life. The increase of his life is what his primary faith is. So that's us, sons. This is where we begin. To begin to believe for the increase. Here it tells us a way in which we can help and be a co-labor with Jesus on that increase. Add to this faith power. Now you'll have to ask the Holy Spirit how to do that. And he will send you the spirit of understanding or wisdom or knowledge, or he himself will tell you, or he'll send an angel to tell you how to add faith, how to add power to your faith. How to add knowledge to that power. So you can get a, a, a gun, you can get a rifle, you're, you're, you know, you can, we, we grew up in America and, you know, we, we learned to shoot and, hunt and everything back when we were kids. And when we first got that gun, boy, I'm gonna tell you, uh, dad was really tight on us, man. You gotta, you, you know, you gotta really watch this. You've got to have a lot of self-control, okay? So you don't shoot that, you don't shoot that, you only shoot this. <laughs> you know, always point the gun up and uh, it's just, I mean, a lot of discipline on how to use that power, okay? And under that power, okay, patience, patience, patience. And under that patience, sonship. That's the rest, being in rest as a son, the position of rest. Unto that, unto that uh, sonship, that God, God likeness, is is just this this incredible love of relationship. That you can love that sister, you can love that brother, but not of the flesh, godly love. You can love those people. You can love them not because of their flesh or their money or their status in life. You can love them just simply because you can see Jesus in them. If you can see Jesus in you, you can see him in others. Adding to that brotherly kindness and then the increase of more and more love. 
For if these things, and this is important, these things are in you and are fruitful and abound, they will make you ne to never be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord. You'll never stop increasing in that personal, intimate relationship with Jesus, the knowledge of the Lord. See, so people that are preaching, uh, preaching all kinds of stuff, and blah, 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 you know, and, and they don't realize, hey, you, son, you've already been forgiven, right? You've already been forgiven from, from your old sins. The old man is dead. He's dead. So if you do these things, you shall never fall. And then something that we'll probably pick it up next uh, on Sunday, an abundant entrance shall be ministered to you into the everlasting kingdom. An abundant entrance will be ministered to you. And that's where we will take off next week in that abundant entrance. Now, what I'm giving you, everyone, is, is not, not a bunch of theory. This is, this is my life. This is what I've lived in for almost 50 years. And I laugh. I just laugh at people. To me, it's just like funny on how much error and how much foolishness there is in the that takes you out of the simplicity of Christ. When he's your life, that's it. All, and anything else going on is just foolishness. So this week and between now and Sunday, if you have an opportunity to go back over this recording, it's not important that you think about me as some super guy who went to heaven, came back. What's important is that I am just a, an image. I'm an expression of Jesus here on the earth to give and impart the reality of our sonship. And I know there are a thousand questions that our natural minds and, and from the world that we can come up with about sonship and i want to try to keep you in the simplicity of it because the simplicity of it is all that you're going to take with you when you leave here <laughs> hallelujah so let's pray right now and offer up this uh, tithe of the increase that's come to our souls tonight our minds have been, been opened up a little bit remember i mentioned to you about the mind of christ seeing into temporary time, perceiving the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of everything that's here? Yes, that's the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ also is of heaven, is alive. Everything is alive. It's about relationship. So let us uh, do this. Say this with me. Father, I'm a son in your kingdom. Lord Jesus, you are my high priest. I bring you a tithe of the increase of the life in my soul tonight. Now just worship him at that time. Worship you, Father. 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 Worship you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for receiving, Jesus. Thank you for receiving our time. Amen. Amen. Well, I want you to know that uh, this is the first time the Holy Spirit has given me direction to open up and impart what I'm giving you over these next four series. Now, there's a lot of little things in between, but to give it to you in one, one simple, simple piece. And that's the way it will manifest in you. Just, you, can, you can hear out of my voice, out, out of my soul. Just that I'm at total rest concerning anything about this world. I'm in total peace about anything of, about the, the, the church, the body of Christ. Uh, I have, you know, because everything I'm telling you is the truth. And this is what I want to give you. So I appreciate you having me, uh, uh, Pastor Priya, my darling. 
And uh, God bless you guys. We'll, we'll see you Sunday. Bye.